Hi y'all, welcome back to Solaris for the second episode of um, doing all the stuff you have to do in the beginning. <laughs> Today I am going to be just doing some like dailies and stuff and I will be meeting my first three or finding out who my first three autofill villagers are. I already know who one of them is, but we're gonna find out who the other two are today together. So also on my community page the other day, I made a post, um, I just had a whim to do one of those like uh, answering your assumptions about me videos that YouTubers do. Um, so I asked for some uh, assumptions that y'all had about me and I got a few submissions and I will be answering those today while I do my little tasks. Um, so that's uh, that's what's going on. We're gonna have kind of a casual hanging out video today. So since the last video that I posted, I I still don't have resident services, um, but I have, I have Nook's Cranny, it's down here and I've um, placed three villager plots and they've all been autofilled. And this is really stupid, but I, I feel very foolish about this, but I went and when, when Tom Nook gave me the like bridge construction kit thing, I went and built the bridge on the right side of the island and then I put all the plots on the left side of the island. So they're just like trapped over there right now, basically. Yeah, as you can see, Apple is my um, my very first autofill villager. She's the, the only one who's moved in so far. I already said hi to her, but I can go, go say hello again. Um, it's actually really funny because Apple was also my first autofill villager on Wild's End and now she's back to haunt me. <laughs> I have to admit, I don't, I don't really like her that much. Um, I don't know. There's just something about her that um, is not right. To me <laughs> but she's fine she can stay for now she was also the first villager to leave wild's end so maybe she sensed my animosity towards her <laughs> i do really like the peppy villagers in general i think they're like the the friendliest but yeah i'm not really planning on keeping any of my starter villagers and my um my first five villagers because it, it really bugs me that they don't have their actual like house interiors that they have these like starter homes i don't know i don't know i just like i i would really just like to have a, a full set of villagers that all have um have their real homes let's see okay i haven't looked at these yet so let's see who who our other autofill villagers are no <laughs> No! Oh no! Okay, if you uh, if you watched my villager hunt where I um, where I got Molly for Wild's End, you may know that I detest the octopus villagers. So that's great. Um, Tom Nook has really done me dirty. Oh God, I can't believe he's moving Marina into my island. I just don't I don't know what it is. I just don't like them. They just don't sit right with me. <laughs> that's so unfortunate. You know what? Maybe this is a an opportunity for growth. Maybe I can learn to love the octopus villagers. Maybe this is my redemption arc where I stop hating hating on octopi okay maybe maybe this one will redeem us a little bit Chester I don't think I know who Chester is actually I think wait is he like the panda I'm gonna look this up real quick actually okay yes yeah, so Chester is the um, he's the panda cub so that's pretty cute okay I'm gonna go and buy a couple of axes from the store and just keep um, I've been chopping wood I'm just gonna keep doing that so I, I want to build up my my store of materials and everything. I'm in the middle of doing the like customization workshop. I have enough wood for the dresser that he wants me to build, but I'm just going to keep doing this for a while while I start answering these assumptions that y'all sent in about me. So um, the first one that I have to answer is um, someone said, I assume that you're chaotic, but in a good way. <laughs> I think that's fairly accurate. I think that most people who know me would agree with the assessment of me being chaotic. I don't know if it's always in a good way. I mean, I don't really have my life together and that's uh, that's not cute, but um, yeah, I think generally that's that's true. I think you're, you're generally right about that. All right, someone said, um, I assume that you like Lord of the Rings, Dungeons and Dragons, and that you're probably a Rennie. I uh, didn't know what a Rennie was. I had to ask someone about that. Um, uh, that just means, um, as far as I know, like someone who, is into like renaissance fairs. I think that the only reason that's not true about me is because I of like lack of opportunity. Like I've never heard of any renaissance fairs um, that happen near where I live or anything, but I feel like that's definitely something I could see myself getting into. But Dungeons and Dragons, um, I'm definitely like interested and in, like my girlfriend plays D&D &D, and my brother plays D&D &D, and like a bunch of my friends also do. Um, I've only ever played once, uh, but I, I definitely want to play more. I love fantasy and I love making characters and... Oh no! Ah, 
Dang it. Okay. Ooh. So yeah, I'd say I'm I'm D and D adjacent. <laughs> but Lord of the Rings, absolutely, you're you're right on the money with that one. I have been watching the Lord of the Rings movie since I was really little. Those are like my biggest comfort movies. And I haven't read the whole series. I've read The Hobbit and I read um I read The Fellowship of the Ring. But yeah, definitely a big fan of Lord of the Rings. And The Shire was very um, I've talked about this before on my channel, but uh, The Shire was definitely a big inspiration for a lot of Wild's End. Probably like my ultimate like favorite fictional location. I'm really sorry if you can hear someone cutting their grass <laughs> across the street. Uh, there is nothing I can do about that. The next assumption someone sent, um, someone said they assume that I'm much more goblin core than cottage core. I don't know what that means. <laughs> To be perfectly honest with you, I don't know what goblin core means. I really don't like label myself as any aesthetic. Um, I, I've talked about a little bit um, the fact that I don't like label my Animal Crossing islands with particular aesthetics, like cores, you know, but also like in real life, that's just not something I ever think about. So I would not say that I'm goblin core or cottage core, but I would be interested to know what goblin core is. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, that was so close. Oh, let me show you the inside of my house. I went and borrowed, <laughs> stole some stuff from my from my other island, and it's it's very chaotic right now. But I think that it's kind of cute. I like to have my house at least a little bit put together from the beginning. I mean, this isn't like how I'm going to keep it, but I like to have it feel like kind of a little home even early on. Okay, the next assumption. Oh, um, a couple a couple different people assumed that I'm non-binary, and that is correct. I am non-binary. I do put um I put my pronouns in the description of every pretty much every video that I post now. And my, if you if you didn't know, my pronouns are they them exclusively. Gender neutral and masculine language is appropriate for me. Um, feminine language is not. Um, so keep that in mind, I guess. <laughs> and thank you for your correct assumptions. And the, the next assumption I have to answer is, um, someone said, I remember seeing that you like to read, so I, I assume that you're a comfort reader, so wholesome fiction and stuff like that, and that you don't like classics or older liter literature that much. I, it's true that I don't really read classics anymore. I mean, obviously I read a lot for school, like for high school, but that's not really what I gravitate towards anymore. I do definitely read a lot more like newer books than, than older books. But I, I wouldn't say it's true that I am a comfort reader or that I mostly read like wholesome fiction. Um, I do read a whole lot of like mystery thrillers um, and I read like literary fiction. I read like a, a very wide variety of genres, I would say. I read some YA, but mostly mostly adult. A lot of speculative and a lot of um, like mystery thrillers, like I said. So I'd say that that assumption is partially true. And that leads uh, that leads pretty well into another assumption I got, which was that I like sci-fi, fantasy, and horror books and movies, and that I like comic books. Yeah, it's totally true that I love sci-fi and fantasy. Horror is like, I, I never watch horror movies. Um, they scare me too much. Um, I do read horror sometimes, but still not very often. It's a genre that I want to get more into and like really find my taste and stuff, but Totally true that I like sci-fi and fantasy a lot. Comic books, I don't, um, I don't read comic books at all. <laughs> I don't know anything about comic books. Uh, I read uh, the occasional graphic novel, but comics are a world that I have not delved into. So again, partially right, partially not right. But thank you for your assumption. By the way, like regardless of whether your your assumption is true or not, I do appreciate everybody who commented on that post. All right, someone else um, said that they assume that I'm a practicing witch slash Wiccan. This is true. Well, I'm not a Wiccan, um, but I am a witch, more or less like a pagan witch. That was a great assumption. I'm I'm very glad that that comes across <laughs> in, in just my, my videos and stuff. So thank you for that. All right, someone said they assume that I prefer comfy sneakers over rhinestone studded heels. Um, I think that all shoes have their place and all shoes are equally valid. All right, someone said, um, uh, my assumption is that you seem like you would only like calm games, but you actually like fast paced games too. Um, I think this is kind of true. I, I primarily play more chill sort of games, especially these days like Animal Crossing and um, Story of Seasons and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I definitely also really like, um, I, I think I've mentioned before that I really like Legend of Zelda. And those can definitely be, I mean, Breath of the Wild definitely is a bit of a stressful game a lot of the times. But like, what I like about that game is that you can kind of take it at your own pace. Um, 
And like if you if you feel like you're not ready to to do something in the game, then you don't have to. You can just go off and like do something that's more chill. But yeah, I'm, I think I mentioned it in, in my Q and A that I mostly just play. I play on um, I play a few games on the Switch, and then other than that, I pretty much only play like old GameCube games that I've been playing since I was like ten. So I definitely don't play that many like. Um, intense or fast-paced games, but I do, I definitely do like challenging games sometimes. Thank you for your assumption. Oh, a couple of people also assumed that I am a plant parent and that I have lots of plants. This is not true. This was also something I answered in my in my Q&A where I, it seems like people just like see me as someone who would have a lot of plants and I, I, I guess that makes sense from like my vibes on Animal Crossing and my islands and everything, but I am just, I'm literally so bad at taking care of plants. Every plant that I've ever had has like died instantly. <laughs> and so um, I don't have any plants at all right now, except for ones that I'm growing outside. I have a couple of herbs and vegetables that I'm growing in containers out on our porch. Um, and some of them are doing okay. Some of them are not doing so well, but um, they're a little bit like outdoor outdoor plants are usually a bit hardier than indoor plants. Um, so I'm not killing them as easily, <laughs> um, but no, I, I don't have a large amount of plants um, and definitely don't have any indoor plants. <laughs> At some point, I just had to accept that that was not something that was in my wheelhouse. Thank you for the assumption though. Like I, I'm glad that I project an air that like I would be able to handle taking care of like tons of, of indoor plants. Right, someone said that they assume that I prefer four forests over beaches. I think that's like generally true, yeah. Most of the time I would be more inclined to take a vacation up to like a cabin in the mountains in the woods um, rather than to the beach, but I also do love the beach, like don't get me wrong. Um, and sometimes I'll, I'll get a craving to go to the beach that just like cannot be satisfied by anything else. I'm actually going, um, I'm going on a little beach trip in a few weeks and I'm so stoked about it because I didn't go, get to go to the beach at all last summer for, you know, obvious reasons, but I'm, I'm really, really excited. I love the beach, but I, I think that in general, the forest environment is uh, one that is a little more appealing to me than the beach environment. So thank you for that assumption. Someone said they, they assume that I am creative and that I love uh, writing. Yeah, I mean, creative is definitely a word that was always applied to me when I was a kid, um, like in school and stuff. It became kind of an identity for me, um, which I think can be kind of, it can get to a point where it's unhealthy and it sort of leads to you thinking that like if you're not producing things, then like your value is less. You know what I mean? I like to make things. I do like writing. So yeah, I, I would say that I definitely like writing and I guess I, yeah, I guess I'm a creative person, but I think everybody I feel like everybody is a creative person, you know? I don't think anybody is like not creative. Like everybody has the ability to create something. Just a lot of us sort of um, just like don't have time or energy to, to invest in like creative endeavors. Yeah, I'd say I'm creative, but not, not so much more than anybody else, you know? But thank you, thank you for that assumption. Right, someone said, I assume that you like when it rains outside. And I thought that was really cute. And um, yes, I do. I do very much like it when it rains outside. It used to be like my favorite weather. Um, I think as I've gotten older, I've started to appreciate the sun a lot more. And I, I love to just like go out in the in the sunshine in the spring and just absorb that vitamin D. But yes, I definitely love the rain. All right, I'm finally gonna finish this workshop that Mr. Nook is giving me. Oh, I just I just realized the person who said that they assumed that I was creative said that I love. They assume that I love reading, not that I love writing. I don't know why I, I mean, apparently I can't read, so so I guess not. No, I do love reading. When I'm gaming, like not um, not for YouTube, like not recording, I am usually like listening to an audio, listening to an audio book while I, while I play games. All right, someone assumed that I, um, that I like never play Animal Crossing ex except for YouTube. And um, that is not true, I would say. Well. Okay, I definitely play off camera like a whole lot and on Wild's End I like did a lot of building off camera like I did not record like every um, every build that I did for that island and um, already on Solaris I've already um, done a significant amount of gameplay off camera but when I think about it like even when I'm not recording whatever I'm doing in the game is like in service of the YouTube channel like I'm playing off camera but I'm like preparing for a build that I'm gonna do for YouTube or, or whatever it is you know but I, I think that if I did not have a YouTube channel I would still play this game every now and then but I would definitely not be playing it on the the regular basis that I that I do which is not to say that I don't enjoy this like I, I'm glad to like have this like motivation to keep playing this game like every day because of my YouTube channel because I just love I love creating the videos that I do so yeah I definitely play a lot of um, a lot of Animal Crossing like off-camera but most of it is like in some way 
in service of my YouTube channel, which which makes sense because like the whole the whole point of the channel is me like building these islands, and so like everything that I'm doing for the island is also for YouTube. All right, and the the last assumption that I have here to answer is um, someone assumed that I am in a relationship. Well, they said I assume that you're in a relationship because you seem so kind and lovely, and that is incredibly sweet of you, and I really appreciate that. Yes, I am in a relationship. I have a girlfriend who I've been with for about two years now. So yes, that is true. All right, and I can customize things now. That's important. Well, that was all the assumptions, and I think that's pretty much all that I have to do on the island for today. So I, I might end, end off this video by time traveling to the next day so that we will have, or maybe, or maybe two days from now, so that we'll, we'll have our, um, our autofill villagers moved in and we can meet them. So I will be right back to wrap up this video. Oh, I wanted to also sort of take you on a little tour of this island, just like as it is in the beginning, because I think that the layout... Oh, hello, Teddy. I hope he, I hope he gives me a reaction. Oh, he wants to help out. Oh, Phoebe already gave me one of these and I put it over here. I don't know why I'm putting it there, but whatever. Uh, what I was saying, um, I think that the layout of this island is very cool and um, kind of unique. I think I showed the map in the begin beginning of the video, but I will pull it up again. Yeah, so we've got these cliffs that wrap around um, the top and the, the um, left side of the island. I just think that this, this um, the way that the river is where it like, We've got these like narrow cliffs with the river running through it. It's just kind of cool. I just really like the way this looks for some reason. I'm thinking about how I want to terraform this island because like I want it to be a city and like very organized, but I also want it to be natural at the same time, um, which is kind of counterintuitive, I guess. So I don't know how much I want to terraform because like the the whole sort of thesis of, of the island is like a city, but in harmony with the, the environment, you know, so. Um, I think that it would it would also make sense to just not really terraform the island at all and just build up the city on top of it like the way that it already is or just terraform like a little bit, you know, but I, I really haven't decided yet. Yeah, I just think that this is a really neat little map. It's just a little bit different than ones I've seen before. But yeah, I'm gonna go say hi to Chester and Marina. It's fine. And I'm gonna I'm gonna pop in on Apple too and just see I mean, I already know what her house is gonna look like because it's a starter house, but it would be nice to pay her a little visit anyway. Ooh, she's crafting. What are you making, Apple? What are you up to? Ooh. <laughs> the, the Peppy Villagers dialogue is so underrated. I think that they are so funny. <laughs> All right, let's go meet our new neighbors. I feel so stupid about all of them being like trapped on this side of the river because <laughs> I, I was not thinking about where my bridge was going. <laughs> okay. Okay, she's not, they're not that bad. The octopus villagers are not that bad. I just, I, I just, mm, ooh, uh, something about like the way they walk with their tentacles. It's just, it's just bad. Okay, hi Marina. Okay, she's like, I guess she's kind of cute. But I don't like the way that their mouths move. I just, mm, it just bothers me. Uh, okay, okay, Marina. You have the right to be here. And I also have the right to hope that you move out really soon. Oh, he's out. We can't even, we can't even go inside. All right, I have to find Chester. Once I find Chester, that will be, that will be the conclusion of the video. So where is Chester? Dude, come on. Maybe he's visiting someone else or maybe he's in the museum or something. I really don't want to be looking for this guy. Oh, here he is. Oh, he's really cute. He's really little and cute. Oh. Oh my god, he's, his like, <laughs> his little tongue hangs out. Look, <laughs> did you see that? Okay, well, that's all from me. Um, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and thank you so much to everybody who commented with their assumptions on that post. Um, very, very sweet of all of you to take take time out of your day so that I could make a video about it. Um, so I really, really appreciate all of that. So thank you so much. Um, and thank you for watching. And I will be back very soon, I'm sure, with another video on this new island. I'm really excited. And um, I hope you all have a great day. And I will see you soon with a new video. Bye-bye.